Yeah, I would like to. Uh, my name is Mikko Vigos, I'm from German football team, and one of the organizers of the Vienna Scholar User Group here in Vienna. Uh, today I would like to talk about uh, functional domain modeling. Basically, uh, more about how to um, apply the functional programming in domain modeling. This is just one of the possible approaches. Uh, I will show you it directly on example, and uh, in the end, I will, I will show you from my point of view the nature of this architecture for this approach. I will be using Scala because Scala is a perfect language uh, <laughs> with functional features, object oriented features, and you can very easily uh, mix both in a very effective manner. So <coughs> I will start maybe with our example domain. How many of you have any uh, experience with domain driven design or at least some domain modeling? Okay, so maybe we can make some short recap. Okay, this is our aggregate root. That means part of the domain uh, objects, uh, entities, and values which uh, are uh, tied to boundless. Uh, everything, be everything what's uh, outside this red cloud here is different part of the domain. That means different aggregate root. Uh, aggregate. Uh, aggregate are a cluster of the object and the values and always one uh, class, in this case order, is uh, an aggregate root. This class is basically responsible for all business operations and it makes a transaction boundary about the, on the operation and uh, ensure business invariance of the part of the domain and so on. So I will start with the classic approach, uh, classic approach, how to, you can call this part and uh, Scala, but all object oriented way. That means we have a bunch of classes, order ID, address, order line, order and all these classes are using the variables that means like in java fields which you can mutate and place uh, then in order because order is an aggregate root we have example of the business method and product which ensures some kind of invariance which require requests it's a method in, in Scala and throws an exception when when the condition is not satisfied. Then look, uh, it's this method is looking for, for some uh, product by product ID and in the end adding this product to new new order line when all, all the invariants are satisfied to order lines of the order. Uh, I would like to show you, or I would like to show you that here we don't have any return type, so basically this method is void for Scala, Scala programmers. And here this line uses collection, which can be mutated. Uh, we have here also another business method, with, but they are not implemented because they are not interested for other approach. Now. <laughs> what uh, we can do better, or how to introduce the functional programming there. Uh, first of all, we have to make immutable data. That means all the our entities and values have to be immutable in the end. Uh, this will guarantee that we don't have any implicit mutation. That means we don't, the state of the entity will not change by any business operation. And this allows us to easier reason about our state of our object and 
Another benefit is that we can share the instances of our business object freely. So without any logs, no words. Uh, next thing, what we will do is that we will rewrite all the, our business message to pure functions. So means that means functions without side effects. Uh, from the functional point perspective, uh, the side effects everything which makes any input, output, throws an exception, uh, branch database, everything is side effects. Side effects are important, uh, otherwise you, your program doesn't deliver any output. But uh, I personally think, and also a lot of uh, people in the function program, that side effects have to be handled on different places. Somewhere when you are interested about re results, and uh, on other places you just work with a pure function. Pure functions means functions which don't have any side effect on the state of the object. That in our case means that we will introduce here, make the all the functions returning the new copy of our aggregate root. Next thing, which is uh, tightly coupled with a prior pure function, is that they are basically referential transferences. That means each call to function can be replaced by the re its result, or each call to function can be replaced directly by its body of the function. Next thing which we will try to do, or we we have to do because otherwise it will not be immutable at all, we have to introduce first and data structure. This term is used not in the manner that you use some kind of persistence, but persistence data structure means data structure which each operation returns a new instance without modifying the state of the current itself. itself. So it's a, basically the same thing as a pure function which we have to implement. And <coughs> the person that the structure is just that we will try to use uh, data structures which are immutable also. So effectively immutable and no in place mutation is allowed. One example of the of the such a data structure in Scala is, for example, vector. When we initialize the vector of three numbers, and then we add a fourth number, and then we compare the references by others, uh, they will not be equal. As, for example, when you modify the list in Java, or Arabic or something. Uh, the next thing is that we have to introduce some kind of immutability or uh, also on other class on our classes. Uh, in fact, in class K, uh, <coughs> in uh, functional programming, and uh, it's called algebraic data types. And uh, this is these are the types which. Uh, define some kind of structure with algebra that means with operations which can be applied on, on them. In, uh, I, I don't want to go much into detail here, but in, a, in the Scala we have a case classes, and case classes are perfect fit for, for uh, uh, algebraic data types. They basically represent the product types. That means that we have a various, uh, that we have a type with some kind of dimension. Uh, and each of these dimensions have different uh, types. Here, for example, we have a class order line which has this kind of field. Each has a different a different type, and uh, these fields are basically the dimensions of this class. Case class as a construct in Scala is a helper, which uh, it's a, it's a, yeah it's a keyword in Scala. But it's a hint for a comp compiler to generate a lot of stuff for this <coughs> class. Equals method, <coughs> hash code method, serialization, and equals is uh, based on all the fields. And what's important for us in our case is all uh, compiler also generates a copy method. I will show you that in example what the copy method does. The next thing, how to uh, use the algebraic types are 
some types. Some types are enumerated set of all the possibilities of the type. And in Scala, we can use two, uh, two things here. First is sealed keyword and case object keyword. Uh, basically, with sealed, we say that this hierarchy <coughs> of this type cannot be inherited elsewhere uh, outside the definition. <coughs> that means this hierarchy can be only inherited in one file where the, this trait is defined. So it improves the encapsulation. And uh, the case object, object as a keyword basically means the singleton, single instance on the JVM. And that means this field or, or this uh, type of this kilogram meter will be only one and will belong to here. In other words, your object hierarchy is finished, set, with its operation. Okay. Now I will show you how it looks like in the code. forces us you to use this name, but in the app, in the code, it will translate it to string. So, for example, here, our order line, order ID, will be, in the end, in the code, uh, in the bytecode, the same. But, again, we introduced the case classes, so all our classes have equals, hash code, copy, and other, other methods. The variable definitions are gone. So all the our, our fields are valued. That means immutable. Once when one signs cannot be changed. Something similar like final in Java. Then uh, we introduce introduce here return type for our business object. Remaining the same, but the, but by the end changed, and we use here the copy method. Copy method basically creates a copy of current instance by changing uh, some uh, field. And here we are changing the field line, appending to new order line here. So now when the client call our <coughs> add product method, it will get another instance of our order with changed, with changed uh, lines collection, which is now, vector before it was array buffer. So also the collection is immutable. Uh, these two instances, after the following the add product method, share all the other fields. So this is, this is how uh, function programming allows you to share uh, a lot of memory, a lot of, a lot of instances when your all instances of the object and all the operations are pure functions. Uh, here we have also now implementations of other methods, and as we can say, uh, see <coughs> as, as, as we can see here, our uh, our invariants are repeating here with this require. Okay, so far so good, but we saw that require throws an exception. So an exception is for us also uh, in side effect, that means our business methods are still not secure, because there in exists some kind of uh, change in our flow, 
that we ca we cannot predict all, that we always get ordered. And how we can get rid of these exceptions from the code? The answer for this is using function still position and combinator. Functions composition, functions which are pure without side effects compose. Here is an example. Uh, when we have two functions which which are defined with accept string and return string, we can make <coughs> composition of these functions or reverse composition of these functions. Uh, just to, to mention the syntax, this underscore here means function, function of current. That means you, you will get uh, object of the type of the function without applied attributes, uh, without applied parameters. Now, here you can see how you can call, when you call our composite, what you get, and when you call our rest composite, what you get. This kind of process for composing the functions is beneficial when you, for example, deal with invariants and combination of invariants. And I will show you in a while how we can change our our model. Next thing, what we have to do uh, to make our business method more function of your functions, we have to replace our exception calls or calls which can throw an exception to something which can handle uh, error value as an, uh, one of the possible outputs. We will be using scalar validation there, but first uh, compositions, uh, combinator. Combinators are basically a small function defined on in, 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 in Scala, you have them on all the collection, containers, functions, everything, which are accepting higher-order functions or returning higher-order functions. So its result is function or its uh, uh, par uh, parameters function. Uh, they can effectively combine functions. For example, here you can see the map when we have some collection and we use the map combinator. That means we will trans and this collection is normally some kind of type, for example, list of strings. We, we can convert it to list of something different. It's always preserved map as a component, <coughs> always preserve, preserve the type of the component. So when we start with the list, we will, we will end with the list. But, but, the type is, uh, but the type inside can change. And this feature is called mapping. There is also one another function called flat map. And these combinators allow us to make monadic time chaining via comprehension. This is just syntax sugar. It's called four comprehensions and it allows you to clearly write your arguments and you can you you, you can get from one step to another step only when the first step is succeed. What is succeed? Uh, all the collections and containers uh, which are defined this way with the combinators are somehow biased. That means more they are more often successful biased. Uh, that means that, for example, when we have a list and we call combinator map, it will apply or do something. So it, it will execute this block of code only when the list contains some uh, items. Uh, same, way, same way here, when we call this function and this uh, function, we are combining through four comprehensions to the next step. Uh, only when the result of the function is something meaningful, the uh, argument will go to the next step. Uh, using underscore, uh, underscore is in Scala a little bit uh, overused, but uh, it basically means something which uh, is in context per default, or something which are not interested for us in other, other steps. Uh, now I will show you how we can use uh, this kind of uh, uh, 
combinators and uh, higher order functions to intu introduce them into our domain. First of all, I have to check out <laughs> new code. <coughs> First of all, we will introduce uh, the validation. The validation is a simple container which has a uh, last type, uh, with, which is by convention the error type, and the right type, which is by convention the result type. So basically, we said that, okay, we our business method has uh, has output which can be when, when it's an error string or when it's a successful result, the order. Uh, here is how we can now rewrite our our uh, invariant without using uh, this required method, which shows in the exception. Good. We just use the string and simple convert into payload because something was some condition was not satisfied, or as in the end, we make a copy copy of our order as before and convert it to success, which is the right side <coughs> of the validation. Uh, as you can <coughs> see, this code is better because we, 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 we don't have any exceptions, so no side effects, because every, every time we are returning the value, so the flow of the code is striker. But as you can see here, we are using too many if else if else and it looks more imperative, not not very much functional. So uh, and we are repeating uh, some things that can be extended to the functions, but we are repeating them in uh, all our business methods. Now I will show you the version where we can get rid of this if and else statement, or to at least locate that in small functions which we can combine. Here, as you can see, <coughs> we have some nice for comprehension. Uh, on, on the first side, it doesn't look nice, uh, but uh, it's very nice w w w w w when you think about what happened here. Here, you, you, you just have your flow of your argument. First, check the quantity, then first check the price, then find uh, product if already exists, and that, and as Everything was here, it's satisfied, so try for a flow of your code. Then create a line, create a line, new order line, and add it to line. And make a copy, because we, we, want, we want to uh, immutable copy of our order. Uh, this invariant, some of them are basic functions. Like quantity invariant, which uh, are accepting the type of the quantity and are returning error or the return uh, type of the quantity. And here we have our if condition. So we just we just extracted this condition to, to separate functions, but uh, we can join the functions, combine them. For example, uh, we have here prime product by ID method, which returns uh, order line, option order line or vector. This is option is a uh, uh, type on the, on the, on Java, uh, which has something similar like validation, but without error. It, it has the value 
or has uh, always written none, so no value. It's uh, basically the replacement for now. And here we are partitioning our, uh, our line. And here we have our check. Product already exists. And here is the chain. Product already exists is a function which accepts the product ID and returns <coughs> the validation of the string error or uh, uh, our found order line and the rest of the order line. And here you can see the chain. We are, we are finding the product which returns this option or vector. When there is no, no error, then we are filtering this product through already exist method. And this is already exist method. It's just uh, mapping through our found uh, partitions. Which, 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 are, which are also the, the parameters into this method. <coughs> so he, he, here you can see that we, we are combining the finding function with the invariant checking function to creating a new function. This is the method chaining in the invariant way. So, and our code now looks like this. Simple step of the algorithm and then passes for result. When, when, when something, and What's, what's important here also that it's successful BS. That means if anywhere here is some kind of error, that means in any step here, the uh, output, the validation with a string, the error message inside, we, 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 don't, we, won't, we, do, we don't get to another step, and <coughs> same way we don't get to our end, so uh, our copy. The same way we, we can now rewrite the all other functions. We are reducing our probe, uh, our, our invariant in for comprehension. And it's always written the same way. Check or some finding and then copy. Okay. This is the this is this is uh, implicit method defined on the validation class. Uh, implicit because okay. somehow I, I, I don't know other evaluation works if it's a success or a failure. You don't define this again in the for in this for check, but it's yeah. Of why why why, why, why because because all, if it's all, success, then as, as I said, happens. when you when you when you make any on a, when you call any combinator on on any type. You preserve the, 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 the type of the container. So when 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 we start here with the quantity invariant, and the quantity invariant has a return type validation, <coughs> validation. That means we are already in a validation flow. So we, we are just dealing with the uh, what's inside the validation. So you you don't have to you don't have to in the end make the success because ever all could of the whole this will be validation something. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what combinators do. They always preserve the container. That's, uh, that's what I explained here. When you have a li list here and you are making uh, the, the items in the list to something, you get always list of something. Okay. Let's talk about side effects. What, what, what is side effects? From a function from a programming point of view, side effects are it's everything. GBS access, logging, uh, EO operations, and uh, okay, there has to be some some point of code where you will deal with the side effects. And a lot of uh, API is written, and a lot of these collections and containers is written that way that have have side effect function. For example, here for each, then when you have the list, uh, you you can iterate through the list, make something with the with the items of the list. But this, what what you do here, never change the list itself. 
it's not possible. You, you cannot get the reference there and, and ch change it. When, when, when you are made, working with a immutable first and other structure. Uh, okay, now I will show you uh, the C table architecture for, for this kind of modeling. As we said, we have a domain uh, with this aggregate root object, which always in each business operation is magical returns new copy. So basically, we have uh, some kind of changing of a state, but we have various copies of this state. Uh, so domain state is effectively mutable. We have a history what happened because we always uh, end our business call with a or with a object before and after operation. Uh, we don't have any implied mutation, so uh, the object share data, like part of the lines, uh, create data, and so on, but we cannot change the values in, in, the, in this field. And basically, each state of this aggregate root represents state in a time, in a certain time, when, when the operation was called. So we have a separation of state and time. Uh, now I will show you what's uh, from my perspective the natural option how to deal with uh, with uh, these changes and uh, how, how to code the service layer for, for uh, this kind of model. And there are these are two maybe or uh, patterns, architectural patterns, common pair responsibility separation and event searching. Common pair responsibility separation basically says that you can you can separate what you talk to your domain and from the querying mechanism how the cloud client see your data and everything that says about that each change uh, <coughs> on your domain uh, can mm, uh, can trigger an event about domain changes. And you can reconstruct, always reconstruct uh, the state of the domain from these events. Uh, domain change is achieved by applying uh, the comments to aggregate, which afterwards will uh, yield domain event. And I will show you right away the implementation with the uh, emphasis on uh, functional programming composability in the, in the service layer. So these two concepts are very nice, but you will see more there how we can combine the functions in the service layer. Uh, I would like to stress again that this is not only possibility how to, how to drive these things, and this is just one of the possible approach. First of all, we will start with our common. And what you will get from this common. Okay. Our our aggregate rules that means uh, order object remains the same. What we add here in our domain is the comments. These comments, <coughs> nice to describe what's the intent of the user. I want to create an order. I want to add product. I want to remove product <coughs> and I will update quantity, change shipment address. So, and these are all also models as a case classes. So simple classes, we just build everything with new table. There are seals, that means nobody can extend what, what the domain can do from outside. <coughs> now, we can start with our service layer. First of all, we have to have some kind of repository, but to read 
find our order, but implementation is not important at this point. So this would be a big question mark. But we will start with our service. Service in contract to get the repository. And here we can define type alias. It's called cat type alias. And we, we are saying for our common handling, everything with every function which accepts the common and returns the validation, even with an error represented in string or the order, will be our common handle. <coughs> this is the only public visible uh, service method, execute, and which kind of common. And what we have here that this uh, this execute method calls another method, which do common. And if this method returns validation with a value, which in our case value is the right size, everything is fine. When not, or we will deal with our exception, so, or we, we will throw the exception for from our domain uh, service. So this is the boundary where you can see how to deal with the final and error state. When you have an error, a case, you can implement here some kind of mechanism. How do, how do you how do you notify your clients about this error? You can have your modification of writing to file, everything, throwing exception, whatever. We have decided just to throw an exception. But this is the point on the service boundary, on the s s uh, service boundary, that here you deal with the exception or with the error state. <coughs> At this, until this point, everything is like except every error is not an exception. Every error is a value in form of validation string. Now we can skip this to common part. Uh, but what, what I want to show you is just this do, do common. Uh, call some kind of method process and put some kind of now word parameters into it. But in the end here is a here is a underscore, which again means curing. So it looks like that the process method has two parameter list. One parameter is in the one parameter uh, function gets the call. And then second parameter we can fill with something different and and we make it here directly in execute because we second parameters we supply the second parameter with our common. Okay, let's look first on our process method. Our process method accepts in as a first parameter common handler. As we said, common handler is defined uh, above as an alias and basically it's a function. So our process method is uh, accept function. So our process method is a high order function. And as a second parameter list, it accepts commands. What to do? And as you can see, uh, what the process do does: runs the command handler, then applies the side effect because for each represents side effect. And one of the side effects is okay, save the order. And the order is okay. And here we 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 we, we get only when the red applying of the command handler was successful. So only when the result is validation order. So here you can see how in the end you are applying the side effect. You just make it in one small block and you, 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 you do everything what you do, or everything what you have to do and want to do with the result. And in the end we are returning result. So we are not broken the chain, we are just returning validation, our error or our order. What's nice here that basically your execution and side effect is one in one place. And now we will get back to our do common. And you can see here some kind of case, uh, case statement. Just for explanation, every, every case statement is in the background in a, in a, in a, in a, by the compiler uh, represented as a function. Uh, so basically here in this do common, 
definition, you see that, okay, when the case order common, create order common uh, came, then call create order method. When the add product order uh, command came, then call add, uh, update order. Uh, so our first command create order, all other commands update order. And now we look how this create order and update order are implemented. Create order just looks in the repository. If there is nothing found, or uh, if, if there is something already with this order ID, we will return a failure. When there is nothing, we will create one and return successfully created order. As you can see, we, here we are not dealing with any storing anything. So this is also from the functional point perspective, a few functions. Update order, same thing, but in a for version in the program version first, we try to find, or in order repository, this, when nothing is found, nothing is found, somehow error is returned, but this, this is, this error is directly in repository, returned by repository, because the repository all also returns validation, some kind of error and order. So the, our repository, Functions or methods are also few functions. And then we apply our function. So update order is a uh, high order function. Two. And it accepts a, one of its parameters function, which gets order and do something with order with error or copy of this order. This copy is here called updated and in the end we return this update. And when we get back to, to our comments, you will see that what we supply there for as a function to this update, we, we supply here directly the calls to our aggregate root because we get order and we call in order the business method. Shorthand for, for, for for this, when there is only one as uh, default attribute, as always use the <laughs> underscore in Scala. Okay. So far, so clear. Or I have a question. I also done nothing in Scala yet, but I was confused um, because the validation has at least two types, and what happens if I Basically, the design of the validation is that you have a last part, which represents yeah. always an error, that everything what you, what you convert to this last part, you, you use this fail. Fail, I don't know how is this method is called. And then you have a right part, which represents your expected result, yeah. and everything what you want to get there is yeah. with success. So it's more like a tuple that has two. Yeah, you, you, you can make it with tuple, but tuple does, doesn't have then uh, <coughs> these combinators that way, because now when, when you have a validation and you call map, for example, this map, what, what's in the map will be executed only when the, you have a right type. Oh. And in, in, in tuple it will be always executed because you always have something in the tuple. Yeah. So you, you lose this biasing, basically, that it's bias for success. Uh, okay, and now I will show you how we can put events into this, into it, so the <coughs> event sorting part. This, the, this was the common part of the common query responsibility separation, basically. So our server is uh, called with the comment and do something with this comment. Now we will make event part, uh, this event sorting part, and this event sorting part basically uh, is used for notifying the observer. No change in repository, but a service 
it's changed a little bit. And what's changed is that our common handlers now return error represented as a string and then a tuple with order and order in it. So we are expecting that in each uh, business method we will trigger some kind of yield. Uh, just, I want to just show you order, 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 order. Yes, we have. Here now we have even <coughs> for order. Because we, we have a set of commons, and then we have a set of even in our domain. Or, and these, are, these represent the state. What happened? Or they create this product edit, product remove, quantity updating, and so on. And th these can be sent to other parts of the system, other, other aggregate routes, just notifying what happened in our, our small part. Uh, execute function didn't change. Do command, uh, I will get right away to do this. But for first, we have to uh, see that update order now changed because it accepts another function, which from updated order creates an event. And in the end, our updated, or, uh, uh, updated order uh, function creates a tuple. New, new order which was updated and even which belongs to this uh, application of the column. And what's changed here in our view common is that we have our update order call, but in the end, we supply next parameter list uh, where we get updated order and we create uh, the, our event for that. Okay, so we have some nice way how to chain uh, or join together common with what to do with the common and what to trigger in the end. But how to trigger it? And that's another nice part. We had already before this block of side effects for each. So we just extend this block that we are accepting order and even, two parameters, not just one. Because all our change in this, all our methods in, in this uh, part of the service now have uh, return type validation string order, order, even. And we can do here in this block everything what you, what, what we need to do with the even. <coughs> I didn't implement it to the end, so you can just <coughs> uh, imagine that here we'll be notifying some other subscribers. Uh, uh, in the end, <coughs> I will I will try to show you how we can achieve with this model because. Uh, I, I said in the beginning that this is nature of fit, this common, the, all this handling. And now I will show you why. Because there is some pretty model for concurrency, message model, uh, message passing concurrency. And maybe you heard that uh, nice implement, it's a nice implementation. One of the, the message passing concurrency implementation is using the actor. And we have actors in Scala directly in uh, our SDK, but there is a nice library called ACAT, which is based on this message passing concurrency and an actor. And I will show you how this message passing concurrency through actors nicely fits to this common, this common service layer. So, we just want to add some access to the mix. And uh, how to do it? How to make our, our service concurrent in, in case that when we call this execute method, everything behind this method will be concurrently executed. Okay, so first of all, our, we, we have, to have to change a little bit structure 
we have our order service with our uh, exiting method. And now we will be returning not the order, but the future. That means handle for that some time, some, at some time you will get a result. This is similar to futures in, in Java, but more powerful. Then we were before dependent on our repository. Now we are dependent on some kind of processor, and we ask for comments. Uh, so we say send a comment to this processor. In the end, when everything works fine, we will convert uh, the result to because uh, returning values to give uh, by ask method is uh, without type, so you, you get also you have to convert it. In the end, so we are converting what to what was expected our error or string validation, and in the end we are mapping this and uh, yeah making the same as before that they, that means when something went wrong we are throwing the test exception everything what was before in a service and has to something to do with the commands is now in order processor which has dependency to order repository uh, type signature of the command handler remains our receive method uh, we, we have here one public method for uh, for uh, working with the service because everything what you send through us operator or bank operator is another type of operator will end in receive block of the actor. Uh, I forget to say that our order processor is now active. So this is uh, this concurrency part of of the process. Okay. Now when we get order command, we just uh, we return to sender that what do command do. And do command and everything else remains without any change. And here you, you, you can see this nice bit because actors basically work on messages. And messages are received in this receipt block and, and somehow converted according to type according to other things and for us our messages are directly our domain comments so when you want to more know more about few things where in the end of the talk there are some links This is this basic concept uh, without uh, common variables and separation, even to think and actor. This is just about how to write functions composably, how to write things. Uh, yeah, do not change, stay with time, and so on. Thanks. is uh, from Scala because in a in a normal APK there is an ether type ether type has left and right part but e but ether type is not yet so you have to always convert which or you have to always say which which kind of part you want to work in your own. so in a Scala they introduce the validation and validation of success yeah so to the right right side always Last thing with, uh, with the actors, where yeah. you show the implementation of an actual actor, and um, in the receive function, you you have, you have this case command and the sender. Where does the command and the come from? Uh, actors, actors are basically running in some kind of framework. Uh, I said aka, aka, or you, you yeah, the, 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 these are aka actors, and uh, aka actors are built that way that each actor always has message queue of incoming messages and always has a reference to to sender of the who who who, who asked for, for something. So this is from API. This is this is from this class actors because we are extending this call. You, this is your call. It's a protect uh, uh, some kind of protect field from actors or something. I don't know how it's implemented but it's it's safe. 
for sure. <laughs> to, to access. You, you, everything, everything there is uh, immutable, so you, you cannot, you, you, have, you have clear API what you can do with your standard, what your message, with, with everything. You, you can manage some changing or something. Everything is immutable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the command. Here, the order service gets actor reference. That's a, some handler of order processor. Yeah? And here, the service sends a command to this processor, to this actor. And it's up on the, the actor framework and actor framework behind to root, distribute, uh, dispatch these messages and, uh, and <coughs> get it to the right actor. This this descending behind that that's made by framework. <coughs> the point here was to show that okay, commons. When, when you decide to design your domain with commons, it's a natural fit for actors because they also use some kind of messages, and basically they they can be commons. <coughs> Does anybody want some stickers from Vienna Scala Group? <laughs> uh, I, I will come. Okay.